Hey guys, welcome to my advanced tips and tricks video for the thrall in Dreadhunger. This video contains nine of my very best tips and tricks that you can use in any of your thrall games, regardless of the strategy that you're playing at the time. They will really up the ante for you in your thrall matches. I'll timestamp each of the tips in the description for easy navigation through the video. These will be specific actions that you can do in game to better your thrall matches. They will not outline any overall thrall strategies, those strats will be in a separate series in the future. The 9 tips I'll be covering in this video are 1. Hiding your bloodstain 2. Sneaking onto a ship surrounded by water 3. Holstering your bone dagger 4. Early game totem locations 5. Storing resources and items on the ship for later use 6. Memorizing the armory door codes. 7. The Thrall's secret Uber Eats coupon. 8. Learning the locations of any and all resources on the map. And 9. The art of distraction. So, let's get right into it. Number 1. Hiding your Bone Dagger's Bloodstain. When you use your Bone Dagger to cast a spell, you leave a bloodstain at your feet which lasts 30 seconds before disappearing. This bloodstain will give away your guilt if discovered by a crewmate, and is a method crewmates use to build trust with each other in experienced lobbies, as they mentally check off who couldn't have performed a thrall spell. But what if I told you it was possible to summon cannibals and not leave a trace? Now, arguably it's a glitch in the game, but it's relatively difficult and risky to pull off, so I personally see no problem with using this technique in your matches. Okay. So if you jump off a decently high area when summoning your cannibals or whiteout, there won't be a floor, so to speak, for the blood to land on if cast mid-air. As a result, the blood just never spawns. Because of the nature of the strategy, you'll need to be relatively close to crewmates when you cast the spell so they see you are nearby and try to nose around your location for the bloodstain. When the bloodstain isn't there, you'll earn more of their trust. So to pull this off, you'll need to manage a few things at once. You'll need to time your spell casting perfectly. You'll need to fall or jump from a height and time the stabbing of your hand well enough that it happens whilst you're still airborne and high enough above the ground so the blood doesn't hit the floor on your way down. To do this correctly, you'll need to begin by casting the spell and jumping shortly after you cast. If you jump first and then cast mid-air, the blood will still be on the ground as the animation takes a moment to happen and your hand won't be stabbed until after you've already landed and the blood will of course hit the ground. If you jump from a place that's almost high enough, you will leave a very faint blood stain on the ground. That gives you a basic idea of how high the object you need to jump off has to be in order not to leave a blood stain. The best way to execute this seamlessly is to swap to your bone dagger as you approach an object that will allow you to naturally climb it without needing to jump. This includes things like coal sleds, wooden sleds, or small cliff faces you can fall off. Coal sleds are my particular favourite as you can approach one, swap to your bone dagger, walk up it, cast and jump. It's simple, natural and won't look out of place to anyone. You can even land and immediately begin looting the coal for maximum stealth. You must also be careful not to jump from too high up as you'll take fall damage when you land and leave a different, much larger bloodstain on the ground instead, which will still look suspicious. Finally, you need to do all of this whilst no crewmate is looking directly at you. If you're able to pull all of this off, you can set up some ludicrous future plays. You'll simultaneously earn the trust of crewmates and frame any players who are away from the group as the players who most likely cast the spell. It's especially difficult to do this technique with the cannibal spell, as you'll need to jump or fall whilst casting after that extra step of selecting your target for the cannibals. This adds to the time that your bone dagger is out for players to see, but will be twice as rewarding as the cannibal call is traditionally the spell that causes the most crewmate snooping. By sharing this technique in this advanced tips and tricks video, I'm hoping it will become more widely known. This knowledge alone 
will evolve the game to require higher standards to build trust rather than simply trusting someone because of the absence of a bloodstain after a cannibal call. I see no issue in using this trick to build your credibility up with the crew and it leads to far more exciting betrayals with more layers of deceptions possible in Dreadhunger and greater depths to solving who the thralls are. I know it's a bit of a grey area, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on this and where you feel it stands ethically to use this technique in lobbies that aren't aware of it. Number 2. Sneaking onto a ship surrounded by water. Whilst in Spirit Walk, you cannot interact with anything, including the ladders to board the ship. This isn't an issue if you can just Spirit Walk up to the ship, wait on the ice, come out of Spirit Walk and climb on. But what if the ship is moving? What if the crew know that you're a thrall? And what if the ship is in the middle of the river with water on either side? This may not be a massive issue for players who are lucky enough to play on less than 100 ping. But for those suffering from a delay, grabbing hold of the ladder before you fall into the water out of Spirit Walk is borderline impossible. This tip makes it possible to sneak on the ship undetected without alerting the crew of your arrival. Whilst in Spirit Walk, watch that timer in the bottom left hand corner, which tells you the remaining time that your Spirit Walk has left before you exit it. Approach the ladders to board the ship and wait. When that timer hits one, prepare to jump. And just before it hits zero, jump and spam press E on your keyboard. The moment you're out of Spirit Walk, you'll grab the ladder whilst in the air and you will avoid landing in the water. This will prevent the massive splash noise you will make when hitting the water, which alerts the crew that someone unannounced is boarding the ship. This makes sneaking onto the ship as a known thrall much easier, especially for players who are on a bit of ping. While we're on the topic, make sure you're sneaking on the ship via the front left hand ladder when the ship is being driven, as the driver's vision of that ladder is blocked by the lifeboat and you can sneak on undetected via the front stairs. Number 3. Holstering your Bone Dagger When spirit walking, your Bone Dagger will automatically be out in your hands. This can be seen floating through the air by an observant crewmate, which could give away where you're going in spirit walk and get you caught with your pants down. But there's a relatively unknown option in Dreadhunger known as Holster. By default, it's set to X on your keyboard. When you press it, you'll holster whatever you're holding, including your Bone Dagger when spirit walking. So next time you spirit walk, make sure you holster that bone dagger to be double sure that you won't be spotted. Number 4. Early Totem Locations Building totems as thrall is extremely important early on, but finding the time and place to do so is a big issue and could get you caught if executed poorly. Having a handful of easy to set up Difficult to notice totem locations as thrall will help you significantly as you're able to maximize the time you're away from the ship and put up a few solid totems without giving away that you're a thrall or even arouse suspicion for being away. I'm going to show a couple of my favorite locations. I know that I'll now need to find some new spots or I could get caught when I play my own dread games by you lot, but they're pretty cheeky and should help you guys out at least until they're more widely known as totem locations. I'll go through these locations on a map by map basis. Alrighty, first up we have The Expanse. I want to quickly stress that these are totem locations that you can build quickly and effectively. The idea is to build the totems during your normal day one routine and they won't require you to duck too far away from your crewmates in order to build them. They may be discovered shortly after, but they won't be tied directly to you and the mana charge that you gain from the totems being up early is well worth the 8 seconds you'll spend setting them up. Summoning a whiteout will always help when building totems safely, so you can build without being spotted, but these locations can be built out without a whiteout, but will require confidence and conviction to pull them off successfully. I'll quickly note that I'm excluding totem locations that require an ice axe to build at as they aren't easy or quick to set up and are commonly known totem locations. I'm also not talking about going back to locations that the crew have already moved through. The goal is to set up totems while keeping pace with the crew 
without needing to dedicate time away from them to set these totems up. So, the first location is on the left of the expanse, behind the large rock that's next to the tent and coal sled in that first area. The idea is to loot a bone and three wood on your way through, then announce you're looting the coal sled on that left loudly to the rest of the crew, before ducking behind the rock to build the totem. You don't even need to loot the coal itself, just build and move on like normal. Ensure that there's no direct line of sight on you during those 8 seconds, so that you aren't seen ducking away and you're golden. The next spot is a little cheeky, and best executed in a whiteout for maximum effect. But you can build a totem anywhere along the wall on the left hand side. Up against the wall past that first house will last the longest, but will be the most difficult to set up. The totem will be out of audio range for the players in the house and will require a sharp eye to spot. You can even duck away while players craft without a whiteout. You'll just require about 20 seconds to do so, which you'll need to judge if it's possible on a case by case scenario. Next, we have a totem in amongst the multitude of whale bones on Stew Island, which is the middle island with all the wolves on it on the expanse. During the chaos of killing the wolves, or when players are looting their meat, build a totem anywhere on that island, ideally a decent away from the wolf carcass locations, and ensure that the totem is primarily covered by the whale bones as you can build in amongst them. These totems will often be found via an audio signal down the road, but they won't be tied directly to you if you execute the totem quickly and you'll gain extra mana for your bone dagger in the meantime. Finally, you can build a totem on the right hand side, just past the two houses. You can build it in the little indent in the wall, and it will hide the totem from view for the players looting the area. In an ideal world, you build this totem without announcing you're even in the area, and it will frame the players who are looting that side when it's discovered later on. Moving on to the approach. The first totem I have here for you does require a little luck, and a very intentional beginning to the match. You need to jump off the ship first, and head down the left hand side. You need to secure a bone and three wood up ahead, then announce you'll be going to go for the coal sled that sometimes spawns in that bottom left hand corner of the map, just below the little cliff of snow and ice. You need to collect the coal and Thrall Vision to check the location of your crew. If you're confident that no further crew will be passing by, at least in the immediate future, create the totem quickly and confidently in that little corner tucked away behind the cliff space. You can then naturally move forward and continue your game. It's definitely a risky play and requires a couple of pieces to fall into place, including the random spawns of coal sleds which sometimes spawn there, sometimes don't but it's one of the quickest totems possible that won't get you out of immediately when executed correctly. Next is a totem location that breaks my previously stated rules a little bit. You'll need to spirit walk and go behind the crew just a tad. Take a number of bones and plenty of wood with you as these totems will not be destroyed the whole game. Basically, Spirit walk over the water to the snow covered land on the right hand side of the approach's initial passage that goes into the rest of the map. You can set up totems that aren't visible from the mainland pretty much anywhere on that island. And the beauty of these totems is that they're too far away for a crewmate to swim over to, destroy, and then swim back without costing them an enormous amount of time and health. If you build them in the correct location, they won't even be able to be shot with bows and arrows or guns either. After you've built them, swim back over to the land. You shouldn't lose too much health, though it depends on which character you're playing, and if you jumped off the ship early, losing your starting heat to that initial swim. A totem location I like to build at is behind the brown tent with a singular doctor's bag and bed under it. You will first encounter it on the approach as you move up through the map. This is an especially strong spot under the cover of a day one whiteout. It's not too far from the ship, it's difficult to notice, 
and will gain you valuable mana for your Bone Dagger until their eventual destruction to an observant crewmate. You can comfortably put up two totems under the cover of Whiteout and make your escape, though you can push for three totems depending on how far away from the location you are when you first cast the Whiteout. The next totem replicates at least a little bit of the Whalebone totem on the Expanse. You can craft a totem on the smaller masts early on into the approach map. These totems will visually blend in, it's just a matter of who will walk nearby and hear them, and who's around to see you place them. It's definitely a strong totem location when executed properly. Another strong totem location is up against the cliff face just before the second brown tent on the left hand side, which has a locked chest, doctor's bag, and a couple of more sort of loot supply things there for you to grab. Players will often pass through there, and it's easy to drop back just a few steps, craft the totem just below that cliff face, and move on. It's a risk, making totems always is, but it can be a totem that lasts the entire game if RNG allows it. Finally, if you push up to the broken ship on the approach, you can jump on top of the broken ship and climb up the crow's nest on the far left hand side of the ship. You can build totems in the crow's nest that no player will accidentally hear, short of a spyglass. It will take an intentional climb from a crew up that crow's nest, or spotting the totem from the crow's nest of the main expedition ship for these totems to get destroyed. And last but not least, the summit. The totems on this map will be locations to build day one, around areas that crewmates would typically go to on the first day. It will not include totems that are too far down the map that will stand you out as an obvious thrall day one as you disappear and bolt away to build them. First is one of my favourite day one summit strategies. You may have seen it in some of my thrall gameplay videos currently up on my channel, but I'm talking about building totems behind the two lifeboats on the left hand side of the summit where the first doctor's bag is located. A neat little day one trick is to rush down the left hand side, loot about three skeletons and grab up to three bones, then loot nine wood and push up to the first cave on that left hand side. Grab any and all coal that you can carry and announce that you're returning to the ship. When done correctly, you can rush back stating your coal intentions and quickly duck behind the lifeboats to build the totems, as the ship will typically stop somewhere nearby those lifeboats with the initial coal. You can then move the ship using the coal you gathered, earn trust from the crew, and move the ship away from your totems so that no other player will accidentally stumble upon them as they return to the ship. It won't always work though. I've had players insist on returning to the ship with me, or be slow jumping off initially, but be patient. Summon a whiteout if you must, and get totems up somewhere behind the ship before or as the ship is moved with the coal you've taken back. That way you'll be set for the whole game with those two or three totems. My next totem location is an odd one, but it can be very effective. Push the left hand side and loot a bone. Push up to that first campsite and build a totem in one of the many indents in the wall that circles around the tent there. You can build the totem and carry on like usual. Players don't typically path up the right hand side of that tent and typically go up the left hand side to go straight into the cave. Depending on the players in your game's awareness levels, the totem may go unnoticed for quite some time. Just act natural once you've placed it and return with coal eventually. When the totem is found, Crewmates may call out other crewmates incorrectly for building it as it's a rather obvious spot and it's surprised that no one spotted it sooner. Moving on to the right hand side of the summit. A strategy I adore is to build a totem or two next to the dug up graves. This will frame the chaplain. <laughs> Check that he isn't your partner first of course. And the totems will gain you mana charge until they're found and destroyed. As long as you weren't seen over there, you'll be golden. Next is one of my most practiced day one totem strats. Rush the right hand side and loot as normal. Ensure you get one to three bones, but try not to be too obvious about it. 
Taking one or two of the bones that often come with the human meat in the tent with the stove there is a great option. When you're out of line of sight, cast a white out, ideally using the blood hiding technique we discussed, and head over to the back of the tent with the stove. Build totems against the wall that pushes up along the right hand side. Be sure to keep talking to the crew as you build them with general comments to ensure they're aware that you're still nearby. Once completed, these totems will be too far away from anyone to be heard and are typically not noticed by a crew for some time. If you do this perfectly, you can time your whiteout to end as it's turning to nighttime so the totems will disappear into the darkness and you'll earn mana charge all night. And finally, you can build totems up the right hand side wall that heads up to the coal sled and ice wall near the second camp on the right hand side. These totems do require you to push a little further than I'd like, but will last a long time. Players rarely head up there and typically won't be spotted for quite some time. When discovered, there's a multitude of players who have pushed up the map by that time and it really could have been any of them. And of course, building totems in the crow's nest of the main ship works for all maps. It's a risky but very fun option to pull off, hiding totems right under the crew's nose. There are a bunch more strong totem locations further up on all maps, but these are my day one placement totem spots, which will provide invaluable early charge to your spells and really help you keep the pressure on the crew. Number five, setting up thrall supplies on the ship for later use. Having options is everything as thrall. You need to be ready to counter whatever the crew are trying to do. I like to ensure I'm always ready by storing thrall items and resources on the ship in a variety of sneaky places for easy access when the time is right. The big one, at least for me, is gunpowder in the boiler room. Hiding multiple gunpowder anywhere in the boiler room will give you the option to sabotage even if you aren't equipped with gunpowder at the time that you need it. There's a great spot in the back of the boiler room where the items can be hidden in the wall itself. The items won't be visible and the crew will need to actively check the spot or accidentally notice the green outline when checking the back chest to find that gunpowder. This gunpowder is especially important to have set up for later in the game. Storing between 5 and 10 gunpowder will let you sabotage the boiler almost instantly if you put 5 plus gunpowder in at a time. If you're ever killed, when you free yourself, you have a location in the boiler room to spirit walk to, collect your gunpowder, and sabotage should the ship be moving. This is especially useful if it's at the end of the game and it's a last ditch effort to stop the crew. Similarly, leaving powder kegs around the ship, whilst risky, is also invaluable. Having a keg to set off at any time without needing to store it constantly in your inventory can be extremely useful, especially if you're killed. Hiding them in plain sight next to barrels that are a part of the ship as default is an easy way to store powder kegs on the ship with a low risk of being found. A couple of my personal favourite spots are on screen now. This also works for poison, though it's less effective. Leaving it amongst the table items in the kitchen is a nice option, or next to the drinks in the poker room on top of the barrel, but it's rare I've ever found a use for this. But again, it's nice to have the option in an ever-changing game. It's more difficult, but storing a desperation weapon in odd spots around the ship could again prove very helpful, as trying to kill crew with your fists on your second life is borderline helpless. Number 6. Delaying and memorizing the armory. Opening the armory is a big moment for crew. It'll either unite the team as they push to Nitro armed for a fight, or they'll give the muskets to thralls and be in a lot of trouble. Delaying the armory being opened can be massive, particularly on the summit. Entering fake codes early in the game can delay the crew later in the match. When the crew take the time to try and open the armory, you can listen to the numbers being called out or observe the person trying to open it and make mental notes or even just write down the numbers provided by the crew onto a pad that's next to you if you don't trust your memory. This means when the crew can't open it due to your fake numbers, you will be able to open it in their absence as you stay on the ship to quote unquote protect it even if they scramble the codes before they leave. It's simple enough to do, 
but can be a lot of fun, especially if you get all four muskets and their ammunition for yourself. Number seven, the Thrall's secret Uber Eats coupon. Getting your hands on human meat can be difficult as Thrall, especially around experienced crewmates. This is less of a problem on the new map, The Expanse, but this tip is still helpful for the other two maps. Try summoning an early cannibal wave onto someone in a nearby cave. You're effectively summoning four pieces of human meat right to you day one. This is human meat that won't be closely monitored by crew and will often be neglected completely after the cannibals are killed and the crew move on. Simply wait for the cave to be looted, harvest the cannibals' corpses, and claim the human meat. You can now put your focus towards getting ready for a productive night as you're able to stay warm after eating all that human meat and set up totems or whatever you want to do during that cold night with all your new free time. Number eight, learning the locations of every relevant resource for any given plan you might have. If you need gunpowder, take the time to learn where all the ammo crates or coal sleds are on the map. If you need poison, know your doctor bag locations. This knowledge will develop over time by playing the game, but you can accelerate the process by jumping into a custom lobby and taking the time to locate each and every spot for a particular resource on that map. You can even time trial yourself, rehearsing your day one gathering speed for each resource in a custom game. It'll be rare you actually use these trials as legitimate strategies in a game, but the trials will greatly increase the efficiency at which you're able to gather each resource, which will help you memorize the resource's locations and you'll know the fastest route to gather that resource should you need it. For example, I recently played a Thrall match as the Royal Marine where my goal was to make as many powder kegs as possible throughout the game. I managed four by the start of day two on the summit, which I was pretty happy with. I did so by knowing all the gunpowder locations on the right hand side and efficiently gather all the other resources to quickly and effectively make those powder kegs during the night time and be ready for a big day two play. If you're interested in seeing how that match played out, you can check it out by clicking on the link in the description. And finally, number nine, the art of distraction. The Thrall's goal is to prevent the expedition from reaching open waters by any means necessary, and a very overlooked and simple method of achieving this is simply distracting the crewmate's normal and efficient method of being. Unlike Among Us, it is the crew who are up against the clock. The Thralls just need to stall the game out long enough that the crew simply run out of time and die to the blizzard. The beauty of this is you can apply this to literally any strategy you're playing. A couple of small but effective things that you can do to disrupt the crew's efficiency include things like building the odd totem leading away from the ship during a whiteout. Crewmates will see the totems when the whiteout clears and abandon whatever they were going to do previously to go out of their way to destroy those totems in the distance. This will also start a conversation on the ship on who could have built them, wasting time, especially if a crewmate is wrongly accused by another crewmate. You could leave a poison on the stove so the crew wastes time debating who left it there, or leave a gunpowder in the boiler while it's off for the same result. You can leave a resource like nails on a workbench, wait for a crewmate to take them and then waste time accusing them of stealing your resources or even an item you left behind. You can take any wood or nails that you see left on the ship and start a conversation about who took them or accuse a random player of taking extra food. You could leave a powder keg somewhere, not set it off and just leave the ship. When you return, someone is bound to have found it and hopefully blamed the person they last saw in that area as a thrall who tried but failed to set off the powder keg and left the evidence behind. You could even craft a totem when standing in a group of four or more players and everyone will immediately argue over who placed it. These are all small, simple things that you can do with a relatively low risk early into the game to create unique circumstances that many crewmates will fixate on. Every second they argue with each other is time you can spend relishing in the time wasted or time that you can spend away from the ship preparing for a more major delay such as a powder keg in the future. 
Of course, if you're caught building totems off the ship or seen leaving the stove with the poison on it, it could backfire. But being confident and using thrall vision will help you perfect these little disruption players and cause unorthodox moments that even the most experienced crew can be sucked into wasting time on. And that's my nine advanced tips and tricks that will improve your thrall games. If there's anything a little bit cheeky that you can do as thrall that I might have missed in this video, I'd love to hear about it, either in the comments of this video or come by my Twitch stream and tell me there, a link to which will be in the description below. It was difficult removing specific cool one-off strategies I like to pull off in my own games, but they felt out of place in this video and required a lot of explanation just to set up context for why they worked in the first place. So keep an eye out for a new series I'll be starting on the channel, an advanced strat series. These videos will feature fully explained out crew and thrall strategies from start to finish that I've developed over time in the game. They'll be fun to try out in your own matches and you can start building them up, adding to them and creating unique twists that make them your own. Thanks for watching. Please like the video if you found these tips useful and subscribe for more Dreadhunger videos. Good luck out in the Arctic and watch out for Bongo.